All right. Well, there it is. This is my version of the shifting crypt. Um, I used a piece of OSB board as the base that I had just sitting out in the yard. Um, and then a piece of foam board that was uh, two inches thick, just pink foam you get from Home Depot. Um, I did that, I think it was uh, two feet by four feet. And then the top piece, um, I did the same thing, uh, two foot by four foot, and then I trimmed it so that it was a little bit smaller to create the lip that you're seeing. Same thing with the cross, I just used a piece of uh, pink foam I had laying around, I think it was a uh, three quarter inch, um, and just hot glued that on. Paint, uh, so for paint, I uh, dry locked everything that I had tinted uh, gray color. And then over the top of that, I painted a coat of black exterior paint, just regular flat black. Um, and then I took a can of gray exterior uh, paint, uh, tinted it to the color that I wanted, and then painted that on and dry brushed the edges. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I dry brushed the edges and then I used the spray bottle technique. While it was still wet, I sprayed it with a spray bottle uh, of water that was basically that I had used to clean my brushes. So it was black, you know, a little bit of brown mixed in and sprayed it and then held it up to create the drip marks that you see running down it. I don't know if you can see very well, but created the dry brush marks. Um, I used a reindeer motor to power it. Um, took a little bit of tinkering with that to get it the, the way I wanted, but I'll run it once for you and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like and the inside of it. All right, one second. Let me plug it in here. You can't really tell because I have the light on, but I put, just quickly took a green LED light that I had laying around, threw it on the inside. I'm gonna have to get a stronger one, um, but I just wanted to see what it would look like. I think it's pretty smooth. Um, I put a pivot point down here on the inside, which I'll show you with a piece of PVC pipe. Um, took some tinkering to get it just the way I wanted it and I also attached a wheel on the inside up at the top um, I put it into the foam and then I used some uh, Insulation spray foam uh, Great stuff to lock it in place um, Seemed to do a pretty good job I'll turn the light out so you can see what it's like. A little darker. See the green light's just not as strong as I want it to be. I really want it to pop. But I'll tinker with that. I just threw one in there. Um, let me get this back to its apex and unplug it. All right, give me a second and I'll flip this over and show you the inside working of it. So, as you can see, that's just the bottom. Do it here real quick. Right. So 
Sorry, I have to set the phone down so I can do all this. Probably making you dizzy. All right. So pop the lid here. So again, lid, just two inch foam board, carved. See the drip marks a lot better there. Came out pretty good. That's the lid. Here's the pivot point that I was talking about. As you can see, I had some trouble getting the right spot, but I finally, finally got it just right. And then I hot glued that in. Same thing up here. You'll see I carved it out and then melted it, tried to smooth it out. Um, try to get, because it was rubbing. It was rubbing when it was going around. The motor sat, sits about here and it was rubbing. So I just, I carved it down in so it wouldn't. Took a piece of uh, one by two that I had laying around, cut it to length. And that's where it screws in. Let me get this out of the way. So, just basic reindeer motor. Got it off the kindies. Um, took out these two screws here and then screwed down through to anchor it in place so it's pretty sturdy. And then I just, this here, this right here, is honestly just a piece of uh, painter stick that I got from Home Depot. Cut it to length. Um, as you can see, I played around with different spots for the uh, hole to anchor it to the lid to get it just right because I want it to close perfectly. Um, I ended up settling on this one here. I'll probably cut a new piece and have it more centered, but that's the hole it ended up being. And then this is just an access hole for me. Um, then this here is the wheel that glides across. Works really good, makes it nice and smooth. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I think I'm going to have it tilted up like I do right now when it's in the yard so you can see it better. Um, and I'll probably drill a couple down here, probably drill a couple uh, water drainage holes. Because even though it's dry locked, I want water to be able to not just sit in it. Um, I played around with the idea of just opening up the bottom, but when the lid opens, I want it to look like it's a closed crypt, not just ground. Um, so I'll probably drill a couple holes down here for drainage so water isn't just sitting there if we get a good rain. We're doing this. This is just my washer. So how I connect it. Um, how I connect it is basically this comes up through. It's just a screw with a washer. Had laying around the yard. Our garage, I mean, comes up like this. Put a washer there and screw it in place to keep it from having any friction. But I think it came out pretty good. Um, if anybody has any ideas on a light to have on the inside, uh, I want one that's strong enough, but it needs to be small enough that it will fit underneath the lid. But I, I really, I want one that pops a little bit better than what I'm currently using. I just grabbed one that I had laying around and threw it up in there, but. So uh, that's my shifting crypt uh, for uh, Gilbert Street Cemetery. All right. Thanks, guys.